Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody. Welcome back to Starfield where today we're going to be taking a look at the Magshear Assault Rifle, I, I guess is what it would be considered. This is one of the mag weapons and this is basically like the assault rifle version of the weapons. So this weapon you're not going to find super early on, although there is a couple quests that you can do and you can actually buy one of these pretty early on. So getting one of these early on is not impossible by any means. If you want to buy that one, it is kind of expensive, but we'll talk about that when we go over the unique versions. Let's talk about the base version and its base stats right away. So the mag shear does 13 damage based on it. That's pretty good for a full auto weapon. This is full auto only. It can't be semi-auto in any way. So 13 damage is on the high side of a full auto weapon. This fires the 50 cal MI array. This is different than the 50 cal caseless round that like the hard target and the log giver shoot. This round is only fired by the mag shear and the mag storm. So it only has one other weapon that it's competing with and both are full auto and one is a heavy weapon, one's a regular weapon. So kind of depends on what build you're going for unless you're just going to use everything. So this might actually not have any competition for the ammo. This holds 75 rounds in it by default, which is very high, although it goes through ammo very fast because it has a 300 round rate of fire. This is one of the highest rate of fires in the whole game. I think this is the third highest rate of fire just behind the minigun and behind the magstorm. So a very fast rate of fire. It's also fairly accurate because you just have to aim in the general area since it's another big square that you just have to hit enemies with. So it makes it pretty easy to actually hit targets at most ranges with this. This has 52 meters of effective range, a very strange amount, although that extra range does help with this one in particular because the damage drop off is pretty severe for this since it doesn't have very high base damage. So out past 52 meters, you do really start to notice this one uh, dropping off in damage pretty rapidly. Decent accuracy, it actually says it has like 66% accuracy, although I would say it's a bit higher because you just have to put that square on something and you're generally going to hit it, so not nearly as low as it might seem. And then this weighs 3.9, so it is one of the heftier rifles in the game. But these are worth a whole lot, so if you do find them laying around, grab them, because you can sell them for a whole lot of money. For the general pros of the Mag Shear, this one does have really high damage per second, and it has a really high rate of fire, so that those two are really good. And it has surprisingly long range for an assault rifle usually much further than the other assault rifles unless you put certain mods on them. For the general cons, the only real con with this weapon is that it can eat through ammo pretty quick. And the 50 cal MI array is not super common to find. There are a couple shops that you can buy it from though. The one in Neon is probably the best where they generally sell a lot of this. They sell a lot of almost every ammo except for 45 rounds because of course they don't just like every other shop. Buying ammo might be a little bit pricey. Stocking ammo might be a little bit difficult for this and it can chew through ammo fairly quickly because of the high rate of fire that it has. On my rifle tier list, I put the mag shear up into A tier, and I think it does belong in A tier. The base mag shear is still pretty good. It works very well as an assault rifle. It's by no means overpowered, but it's a solid all around weapon that can kind of do every job. Let's talk about a modded version and where I would put that and what type of mods I would like to have on it. So starting out of the barrel, we have a couple different options and I'd recommend one of two. Either go with the magnetic rails or the longer barrel. The longer barrel gives you increased accuracy, reduces your recoil, and it gives you even longer range, which is pretty cool. It just reduces your ADS speed, but again, with the mag weapons, you don't always have to ADS. Hip firing them is pretty effective. The magnetic rails gives you even more damage and a higher rate of fire, but it does decrease your ADS speed as well. So this just depends if you want more effective range or if you want more damage. I went with more damage on mine but both are pretty good, so pick whichever one you like. For a laser, this one already technically has a laser on it, but you can put the recon laser on it, which changes your lasers to blue, so that's pretty cool. It also makes it so it can mark enemies afterward, just like all the recon lasers or recon scopes can. Just throw that one on if you can. If not, the regular laser is perfectly fine. For a muzzle, I would recommend the shock charge band. This one makes it so you have electricity on every shot, and since this is full auto and has such a high rate of fire, it triggers pretty often. Dealing extra electricity damage with a high rate of fire gun is really nice, so I would definitely recommend that one. If you can't get that, then the compensator or the muzzle brake work. I don't know how either of these actually work on the weapon, but they would be a bonus to the weapon if you want to throw them on there. Then for a magazine and battery, I would just recommend that you go with the depleted uranium rounds. It's generally going to be the best option here since this gives you even more damage, even longer range, and it gives you more armor penetration. This does have armor pen rounds on it that you could put in if you would like, and if you don't have a high enough weapon skill, then that one works pretty well too. But the depleted uranium rounds are just a straight upgrade from that. The other option would be a tactical magazine, which is fine. I don't find that I really need to reload this one super often though. So I usually just go with the depleted uranium rounds to get more damage out of this. 
And then for an internal, we have our three basic options like we usually get, which is high powered, high velocity, and hair trigger. Hair trigger is for a faster rate of fire, which this one doesn't really need. I don't think that one's super necessary. High power gives you more damage per shot, and that's the one that I went with. And then high velocity will give you longer range. I would say either high velocity or high powered are better on this one. I really don't know why you would need hair trigger on this unless you just want to empty out this thing as quickly as possible, which could be very fun. I'm not saying that that wouldn't be fun. I just don't think it would be your best option. With all of these on the mag shear, I would actually move it up a tier from A tier to S tier because this one does actually function very well as an assault rifle and it probably fits the best for that role out of almost any weapon in the game besides maybe I guess like a semi-auto Beowulf but even then this one has much higher rate of fire so if you want like a full auto close range weapon or medium range weapon this one is probably going to be one of your best options. Now there is two unique versions of this that we do need to talk about. The very first one that we'll go over is called the Mind Terror. This one you buy in Neon. This one is by the Core Kinetics shop which I didn't actually even know existed before making this video. I didn't even know this weapon existed, let alone the shop existing, and they generally sell the mag shot or mag weapons in general. They also have a ton of ammo in there. Again, they, they have basically everything. I was able to find like 712 gauge shells for this, but they only held like 19 45 rounds. I don't know why no vendor in this has any 45 ACP. The Mind Tear does cost a decent amount to buy if you would like to get it. It does come with a unique effect and it comes with two mods on it. For mods, it gets depleted uranium rounds, which is really good, and the magnetic rails, which is also really good. More damage from both of those makes it so this one should have quite a bit more damage when you're getting it. You can buy this one super early on if you just want to go over to Neon, and the unique effect it has is Frenzy. Frenzy is not really that great of a unique effect. It's probably one of the weaker unique effects on a weapon because it just makes it so you have a chance of frenzying enemies so they can attack other nearby enemies, but this doesn't trigger very often. It's just not super consistent. It's still a mag shear weapon though that you can buy with some mods on it, like the depleted uranium round. So that's a good enough selling point. But the other unique mag shear that we got is even better. This one is called the Revenant. And this one you get at the end of the Pirate's Quest. And this one is really awesome. It already looks really cool. I love the, the black, red, and white that it has on it. This one is tricked out with a couple of mods on it. And it does have three legendary effects. And it's always guaranteed to have these three legendary effects, which is really cool. This has a short barrel, a muzzle break, and high velocity built on it already. All of those are pretty decent. They're not necessarily the ones that I would put on there, but they're okay enough. So mods are mods, that's really cool. And then for its three legendary effects, it's got extended magazine. So it doubles its magazine from 75 to 150, which actually feels really good on this weapon. It has lacerating on it. So you have bleed on this and that chunks out basically anything that's not a robot. Robots are immune to bleed, but aliens and humans are not. So you will do a lot of damage and damage over time thanks to that. And then it has titanium build on it too, which makes it super lightweight. This thing comes in at 0.1 weight, which is pretty crazy. It will get heavier if you throw mods on there though, because uh, the mods are not actually affected by titanium. It's just the base weight of the weapon, which kind of sucks. I wish that that wasn't a, a factor into this. I wish that it would just cut your weight in half no matter what your weapon was or no matter what mods you have on it. But assuming you're not gonna mod this, it's very, very good. It's super lightweight to carry on you. It's just one of the most convenient weapons to actually pick up and just put on your person. You don't really have to think about it. It's not gonna take up any sort of room and it just shreds through anything. The Revenant is probably one of the strongest weapons in the entire game. So should you use the Mag Shear? I would say, yeah, so long as you have ammo for it, it's really good. The Revenant is an amazing weapon to go for, especially if you wanna get it early on. It can carry you through an entire playthrough. You don't even need like an upgraded version of this. However, if you're going to do like New Game Plus, you can absolutely get an advanced version and it will also carry you through that no problem, even if you're not building a rifle build. The standard mag shear is also pretty good, shreds through things pretty effectively. I really enjoy the mag shear. I think it's a really cool gun in Starfield. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. Tell me your thoughts on the mag shear down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. What do you guys think of this? I, I know everybody loves the Revenant because in my last tier list, everybody was talking about the Revenant and it, yeah, it is an amazingly strong weapon. One of the strongest legendary weapons that's like guaranteed in the game. Thank you again. You guys take care and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye bye everyone.